In this video, I'll show you how to run the OS Watcher Black Box Analyzer. Now, because the analyzer is written in Java, it can run on any platform that's running Java. The data collector piece of OS Watcher Black Box has to run on Linux Unix, but the analysis can take place on any any um, machine that has Java. So, what I've done is I've installed the analyzer on my laptop. So it's easy for me then to review data that customers uh, upload through SRs. I can just download it on my laptop and, and uh, run the analysis here. But what you want to do is go to the directory where you've installed OS Watcher Black Box. And you can see here, I've installed it here. Okay. And this is the analyzer, OSWBBA.jar. So how do we run it? Well, this is the syntax. For those of you not familiar with Java, there's a there's a syntax for Java that you have to be familiar with. But basically, it's Java space minus jar space name of the program in our case OSWBBA.jar space minus i, and this is an input argument here. It's the fully qualified path name of where your archive directory is. In this case, you see that I've, in, I've got a directory here in, in this location. So hit return. And you can see the files are being analyzed. So you can see it's uh, analyzing the IOSTAT files, all the VMSTAT files, NETSTAT files, and top files. Now, there's lots of data collected that it doesn't analyze. It's not looking at the at the output of PS command and some of the other commands. So it's only looking at these four um, these four different uh, directories, top, netstat, vmstat, and iostat. Okay, once the parsing is completed, you'll get a very basic command line um, interface here. And here are our options. Option number one, two, and three allow us to display CPU graphs. Option four, memory, five, disk, 6, 7, and 8 allow us to write these uh, GIF files to disk. Well, I'll go through all these options as we go here, but option number one displays the run queues associated with the CPU. So we can see, for example, here's our actual run queue. Here's our uh, number of processes being blocked queue. And if available uh, on certain versions of Unix, you'll have a third graph here for swap. Number of processes swapped. This isn't available on Linux, which is uh, actually the, the data I collected here is, is on Linux, so we don't see that graph. Okay. Okay, option number two, we can look at CPU utilization. So in this case, we can see, and it's hard to see here because it's we have virtually no CPU utilization here. You can see barely see the blue line here at the bottom uh, at representing like 0 or 1% of the CPU being dedicated to user mode. System the same thing. It's not a good example because it's not a lot of stuff going on on this, but you can see the line is, is, is right close to 0, meaning that we're virtually 100% idle, meaning there's nothing going on on this. Um, in this example. Okay. We can also do the same thing with memory. We can we can graph memory statistics here. We can look at the, the amount of free memory and the amount of swap. Okay, we can look at disk. Uh, I think I hit the wrong option here. We can look at uh, option number five. Okay. You may have hundreds of devices on, on, your, on your system. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to order all those devices with respect to service time. So uh, if you had two or three hundred devices here, it would list all of them, but it's, it's going to order those uh, with respect to who's got the worst service time. So you can focus on these devices and not worry about devices that are not a problem. So in this case, we can selectively uh, uh, choose which device we want and I'll, I'll just pick this top device here and then we can see the graphs associated with that device we can see percent busy we can see service time writes per second 
reads per second. Okay. Now, options one, two, three, four, and five will display these graphs up on the screen for us, but we can just have easily uh, just generated these GIF files and, and, and write them to disk, and that's what option six, seven, and eight does. So option six, for example, we can see that we've just generated all these GIFs associated with uh, with CPU and they're written by default to the GIF subdirectory underneath where we've installed OS Watch or Black Box. So if we go there and look at the GIF directory, we can see all the graphs here that we that we just generated. Um, option number e, uh, or option L lets us uh, specify an alternate location of the GIF directory. So if we didn't want to put them here in the in the default location, we could pick a new location. So let's pick a new location here. So this will be the new location where we'll we'll write the GIF files. We'll just put it in temp here as an example. No, I didn't. I didn't do it right. Uh, let's do it again. Okay, and we can see all the GIF files will be placed in in uh, the slash temp directory. So now, if we do option number six again, we can see that they're being written out to the temp directory. Okay. Now here we can see we've got a lot of data collected. We can see there's about, I don't know, uh, 18 hours worth of data here. Your archive could be fairly large. By default we, uh, we're saying collect 48 hours worth of information so this graph can, uh, can get very busy. If you wanted to drill down and focus on a particular time, say you had a performance problem at a particular time, and to, and to get more granularity you can zoom in on a particular time. So Let's zoom in, say, from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. We'll just, we'll, instead of graphing everything in the archive, we'll just graph what's between 10 and 11, but we'll expand that now. So what happens at between 10 and 11 will be completely full of graphs, so we have a, a lot more granularity. So how do we do that? We do that by option number T, specify a different time scale. So now we have to enter in the start time and the stop time where we want to graph. So what we decided is that we wanted to graph June 13 at 10 o'clock at night, 2200, and the end time would be June 13th. Eleven o'clock at night, twenty-three hundred, okay now if we look at the CPU graph again we should see only uh, that information graph and expanded from 10 to 11 which is what we see here so we can zoom in on any particular time if we've got lots of data in the archive want to focus on a, on a particular time where we had a, some significant performance problem we can do that Okay. Okay. Uh, option D allows us to return to the default time, um, so we'll do that. Option D. So now we're looking at the whole archive again, not just a uh, that one hour from 10 to 11. Uh, option R um, removes all the graphs. So these graphs pop up on the screen here. The only way to remove them is with option R. So you can clean it up with option R. Okay. Option P allows us to generate a, an HTML profile, and there'll be more on that in a separate video on, on how to do that and what to look for. But So we could say option number P, generate a profile, and you can give it a name or accept a, a default name. In this case, we'll just say it's Tuesday Crash, what we want to name this. Okay, so now we've generated a profile, so we can go to the profile directory. 
where we've installed OS Watcher Black Box. And look at the profile for Tuesday Crash. Okay, so here's the HTML profile for Tuesday Crash. Okay, A, option A allows us to analyze the data, and this is the, the new feature uh, which automatically analyzes the archive and produces a text-based file on, on what it found. So we can do that with option A, and you can see it's pretty much instantaneous here, even though we had 16 hours worth of data. Okay, so what that will do is create a file in the analysis subdirectory. Okay. So this is our this is our file. Okay, and the last option is to exit the program and uh, we'll do that and that will end the video.